what's up everyone thanks for watching another video of mine today we'll be going through the topic multi-view drawings and this is the technical drawing topic um, that you will be um, doing for your exams so we have 10 multiple choice questions that I'm going to be going through with you okay uh, before you do that hit the subscribe button or if you want to leave a question put it in the comment and I'll answer it later okay all right let's go <laughs> Okay, so before we start anything, if you're not sure what a multi-view drawing is, and you should know by now, um, it is a drawing that shows two or more dimensional views of a three-dimensional object. So here you will see a drawing that has two-dimensional drawings, and in the right corner, as I put on my laser pointer, you will see the three-dimensional drawing, okay? It has a height, it has a length, and it has a width, okay? So this is a three-dimensional drawing. What we are doing is taking the measurements from this drawing and putting it in two dimensions. So this is the view looking from up to down or top down onto the drawing itself. This is looking to the left of the drawing, and this is looking to the front of the drawing, okay? All right. And the multi-view multi drawings, they provide the shape and description of an object. And uh, the main thing that they are used for is to represent a three-dimensional object in um, two dimensions, okay? So if you don't have the building or if you don't have the actual object in 3D, two-dimensional drawings should give you enough information to make the 3D object, okay? All right, so now that we've done that, we'll go through the questions. All right, so number one says, if a designer is developing a plan, a plan for a project in which the entire path is made out of three quarter inch thick plywood, and he only wants to use one view, which view should he or she use, okay? So, someone is making a project where the three quarter inch thick plywood be would be used as the walls and he only has he or she only has one view to use which would he use would he use the front view the top view the right view or the back view okay all right so here we have um, the six principal views. If you look at the previous videos, and I suggest that you do, um, you will see the different views that you would have for a orthographic drawing, okay, or multi-view drawing. And you have the top view, the back view, the right side view, the bottom view, the front view, and the rear view, okay? So here is the three-quarter inch, or an example of a um, two pieces of plywood. If you want to show the thickness of the plywood, and remember the plywood would be vertical if they are using them for the walls, um, you would need to look from the top down onto the, um, the floor plan or the plan in order to see the thickness of the walls, okay? So this would not only give you the thickness, but it would also give you the direction or the, um, the placements of the boards themselves, okay? So if you look at the rear view or the front view, you won't be able to get all the information that you need. So you have to be looking down. And this is an example of a floor plan where you're looking down onto the plan. So let's say these are um, three quarter inch thick plywoods. You would see them going all around the building. Okay. All right. So the answer would be top view. All right. Number two says in developing a multi-view drawing, the drafter can use a dash line. What type of line would the drafter be using to help locate the top and the right side views, okay? In developing a multi-view drawing, the drafter can use a dash line to locate the top and the right side views, okay? So, <clears throat> in A, it says, would the developer be using a object line which is this one it shows the outline of the 
object itself will, will they be using a hidden line which shows behind the object which is hidden in real life or will it be showing a dimension line and the answer would be um, none of those okay because if you're doing a multi-view drawing um, the hidden line would not be used first of all and the dimension line would be used but that would not be used to locate the right side views okay so the answer would be the mitre line and the mitre line is a 45 degree line that um, transfers um, the depth of an object into um, the bottom view of the other 2D drawing okay so if you want to get the thickness from 3 to 4 down here you have to draw the mitre line, run your lines across, and then bring them down to get the thickness or the depth of the um, the object, okay? So the answer would be a mitre line. So know the differences between the different lines. As we said in different the past videos, you should nobody know what the different lines are, okay? All right, so number three says, the type of line that projects from an object for the express purpose of locating a dimension is a dash line. So the type of line that projects, and when they say project, the type of line that um, follows or comes from um, a certain object, okay? So there's a line that comes from a certain object which shows the location where the dimension begins or ends, okay? And what type of line would that be called? Is it a visible line, a hidden line, an extension line, or a dimension line, okay? So by now you should know what a dimension line is, and if you look here, the dimension line is the line that contains the measurement itself, so that cannot be the answer. The line though that projects from the object itself, and this is the object, the rectangle, would be the extension line, okay? So the answer would be the extension line. <coughs> and also know the differences between um, the different paths of the um, of dimensioning, basically, okay? All right. Number four, the center lines are used to locate or represent centers of A, acts, B, circles, C, hidden round features, or D, all of the above. And the answer would be all of the above. If you look at the drawing itself, you can see center lines all around each drawing. And they are used to represent um, the center of various um, basic marks or arcs or circles or squares or anything that you need to know the center of, you use a, um, a center line. Okay, so the answer would be all of the above. Number five says architectural drawings used to construct a house are often plotted with a scale of of this number equals to this number. What scale is this? Okay, so basically they're asking you to um, name what this scale is, and the answer would be a quarter scale, and not to be confused with the scale factor. The scale factor of a quarter scale to one foot, which is this, would be 48. So a quarter inch drawing would be 48 times um, the scale of a, a real life building. Okay, so or 48 times smaller of the scale of a real time or a true building. Okay. All right. Number six, in multi-view drawing, it is common practice to include three views the front, the top, and the right side. As you saw in the beginning, you have three views. If no dimensions are required though, on the right side view, because you have all the measurements already in two of the views, the drafter can A, leave the view as is, B, eliminate the view, C, use the left view instead, or D, none of the above, okay? Uh, which one would you think it is? And let's look at these first before I give you the answer. So you have the three views, the top, the front, and the side view, or the right side. Um, sometimes you don't need all three views to know all the measurements of the drawing. And over here you see a two-view drawing where 
um, an object can be described by two views only okay so here you have the front view and the right side view so what you want to do is eliminate the view you don't want to overdo um, the drawing by putting unnecessary measurements to confuse whoever is um, building it the contractor or the designer okay so you want to um, or the maker so you want to um, put as little information as possible once enough information is there okay so yes you want to eliminate the view okay all right so number seven the autocad command used to combine two or more primitive shapes into a single three dimensional model is called a add command b a union command c a attach command or d a form command okay so when you're using autocad there's a command or symbol that you have to um, press or use or type in in order to combine two basic shapes together okay so let me show you how this works all right so you have um two shapes which is a circle this is before the answer this is a circle and this is a square and you want to combine them so you want to get rid of this middle piece right here and what you will do you will use the union command in order to um, combine them or fuse them together so right over here they're not fused over here they are fused together and if i show you it in a three-dimensional form now here you have the square and the the cube now and the cylinder and here you have the cube and the cylinder um using the union command okay so you would use a union command for that um application all right number eight most architectural drawings produced for field use by building contractors are printed on architectural d size paper what is the measurement of the d size paper so basically all you have to do i keep telling you guys that you can google anything if you want to know what a d size paper is you just google it okay and here you have it so you have different sizes of paper that you can print on and the d size paper is a 24 inch by 36 inch um, paper so the answer would be a okay and below them you have different other different um, measurements that you can also use but the answer for this one would be um 24 by 36 um we also use the 18 by 24 and the 11 by 17 those are the main ones that um, I use, and maybe sometimes a letter paper, okay? Which is eight by 11. All right, number nine says geometric primitives includes shapes such as A, boxes, B, cylinders, C, wedges, or D, all of the above, okay? So geometric primitives are basic shapes okay so you have circles squares cubes those are the basic basic shapes and then if you're designing something you want to fuse them together or um, make a different non um, general shape um, you would change them up okay so here's here are some examples of um, primitive shapes okay. so you have the cones cylinders wedges spheres and the torus, as we spoke about in the previous in a previous video, um, boxes and pyramids. Okay, so as you can see in the options, that all of them are um, called out. So the answer would be all of the above. Okay, and the last question: a full scale technical drawing will have a scale factor of dash. Okay, is it one to one? Is it one to two? Is it 2 to 1 or is it 1 to 4? So here you have the ratios. And if you want to have a full scale, full scale means that in real life, what is drawn or what is built is the true um, scale of what you designed. Okay. So here you have a example of a paper drawing. So this paper drawing would not be full scale because it is reduced so you see the doors in the drawing and everything these would be a lot bigger than they are right there okay in a full scale so this is not a full scale in the full scale drawing drawings over here um, as you can see 
the persons or the humans are actually inside of the drawing itself okay so it's at a scale where um, if you were to build a house um, the measurements would be the same thing when you're laying your blocks and so on the measurements will be marked out as the same um, dimensions okay all right so that would be a full scale drawing and the scale factor would be one to one because one would be equal to one okay all right so that would be the answer all right so thanks for watching another video um if you understood hit the like button don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification for more videos okay thanks for watching and take care bye